Quite a lot at stake here this afternoon. Iowa 18 and 8, a chance to go to either the NCAA or the NIT, while Illinois is 18 and 11 with an NIT berth, a real possibility. This is Bob Hogan along with Frosty Mitchell. I want to thank you for joining us here this afternoon. We had some audio difficulties early in our broadcast, and hopefully we have shored those up and we should be in good shape along the rest of the way. Bob, we're going to have an interesting broadcast this afternoon. Unfortunately, I don't hear a word you say in our headsets uh, today, uh, so I'm going to try and read lips uh, whenever I see you talking, and you'll have to punch me if you want to cue me, and unfortunately, I'm not hearing you. Okay, we'll try to uh, shore these up as best we can. We're having some outside audio difficulties and trying to straighten them out as we go along here. Iowa and Illinois, again, you probably heard a little bit earlier, Purdue has defeated Michigan State by a score of 91 to 73, so Iowa is not playing for third place in the Big Ten this afternoon. Ohio State and Indiana lead the Big Ten with 12 and 5 records. Purdue now 11 and 7. Iowa is 9 and 8, and Minnesota is also 9 and 8. Illinois comes in here 8 and 9 this afternoon. More importantly, they're 18 and 11 overall. They lost only two games in the preseason. That to Missouri and Marquette, a couple of close ones there, so they really have a uh, a good possibility to go to the NIT with a victory here, especially this afternoon. You bet. There's probably more pressure on Illinois than there is Iowa into this ball game today. And there's been pressure on them all season long. This is a ball team that a year ago, you know, won their first 15 ball games uh, in a row, lost seven of the final 11. And the Chicago press hasn't been kind to Lou Henson and the fighting uh, Illini. They suggest that maybe he's got as good a material as anybody in the whole Big Ten. And very possibly he does. Uh, they're the finest shooting team uh, in the the league and of course the Hawkeyes uh, to a man including Lute Olson felt they were lucky to escape Champaign-Urbana in the first Big Ten ball game this year when uh, the Fighting Illini, a good shooting team, did not have two shots. One by Rob Johnson, the other by Bontamps Fall at the end of the ball game. But uh, Illinois very easily could be an NIT team. Lute Olson feels that Iowa has a shot though with a win today, particularly a convincing win if Ronnie Lester's back as a drawing card to be the fourth team out of the Big Ten into the NCAA. We're getting ready for the starting lineups, and again, we will reiterate that Ronnie Lester will start and watch the reaction of this crowd when the Reverend Robert Holtammer reads his name. Now we'll throw it to the PA announcer, the Reverend Robert Holtammer. Have you enjoyed Hawkeye basketball? From Champaign-Urbana, the home of the University of Illinois, let's greet our guests this afternoon with a warm Iowa welcome for Coach Lou Henson and the Fighting Illini. The Illini coming off a big win over Northwestern, 90 to 66. For number 19, say hello to Lou Olson and the Iowa Hawkeyes. You know, once again, a sold-out house. It's been that way all season long for every home game. Before we introduce the starting lineups, we have two special introductions. First of all, for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Number 23, Mike Ahrens, a senior from Chicago. He was a walk-on, and he's walking on crutches right now. And Curtis Sandy Blom from Pella, our senior manager. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the introductions of the starting lineup. First of all, at forward for Illinois, a 6'8 junior from Chicago, number 33, Eddie Johnson. At forward for the Hawkeyes, 6'6 sophomore from Chicago, number 40, Kevin Boyle. Kevin Boyle averaging 12.1, a sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois. At the other forward for the Illini, a 6'7 senior from Peoria, number 42, Mark 
Smith. Mark Smith, a scorer, 14-point average. For the Hawkeyes, 6'7", senior out of Peoria. From Iowa City West, number 52, Steve Waite. Steve Waite comes in with a scoring average of 7.3, a junior out of Iowa City West High School. At center for Illinois, a 6'11", junior from Peoria, number 44, Derek Holcomb. Holcomb starting in the place of James Griffin. For the Hawkeyes, 6'10", junior from Chicago, number 54. Steve Special K playing the game of his life right now. 66 points in the last three and games. One guard for the Illini, 6'4", sophomore from South Beloit, Illinois, number 22, Harry Range. Range has the range. For the Hawkeyes, averaging 6.9 six six a game. Chicago, number 30, Kenny Arnold. Arnold averaging 12.5. At the other guard for Illinois, 6'2", senior from Chicago, number 10, Reno Gray. Get ready. Watch the explosion the right now. Hawkeye, senior from Chicago, number 12, Ronnie Lester. A standing ovation from the Iowa Fieldhouse crowd as they explode for Ronnie Lester. Well, if your adrenaline isn't pumping right now, uh, better be afraid of rigor mortis if uh, your adrenaline isn't pumping because your heart's in your throat. You saw the tears come down the cheeks of Lou Dolson, and everybody is saying so long to Ronnie Lester, but hoping the Hawkeye season still has maybe as much as three ball games to go in tournament play. Well, Lou's over his emotions. He's down there pleading with the kids right now, saying let's win one more big one, and let's go to the NCAA. Lou Henson telling the Fighting Illini, let's win and get a shot at the NIT. They've won two tournaments already this year. They won the Fighting Illini tournament on their home court. They won the Rainbow Classic at holiday time. So they want to go to one more tournament. What a difference from the last time that these two teams played their Frosty. You'll remember that Illinois was ranked number 20 in the nation, and Iowa was ranked number 10. A lot has happened, a lot of losses in the Big Ten when conference play began. Again, starting those starting lineups for you for the Fighting Illini of Champaign-Urbana, Reno Gray and Perry Range at the guards, Eddie Johnson, Mark Smith at the forwards, and Derek Holcomb is the center. And that's Reno Gray with the basketball in the orange and blue of Illinois. Good penetration, and he goes to Perry Range, and we'll no see basket. what the whistle is about. No basket. And the foul appears to be on Reno Gray, a charging call. And you got a good camera shot there a moment ago of number 12, Ronnie Lester. It's the right knee, of course, that is all bandaged up. Probably the most talked about anatomy in Iowa this year has been uh, Ronnie Lester's right knee. And you see him out there right now, number 12. You thought maybe he'd be playing a bare skin after they retired his jersey. But here comes Ronnie Lester. The crowd goes absolutely wild. We'll see if his mobility is limited. And he goes to the basket and scores the first time to put the ball on. When he scores, he goes over the 1,600 mark. He was 1,599, Iowa's most prolific scorer ever. Broke that record earlier this year, held by Don Nelson. That makes 1,601. Crowd is loving it. Take a look at it again on a drive here on the instant replay. That's Ronnie Lester, number 12, left-handed, working inside, double pump, carrying it up. It goes on the glass, falls in, and he's now at the line, live with Bob Hogue. Ronnie Lester thinks it's the first three points of the game. You don't think this crowd is charged up. Everyone is charged up. And Range runs right into Steve Krasison. No oh. foul is called. Old Big Ten rule of no harm, no foul, I guess. Super K would argue about that. Mark Smith with the basketball. They shoot it around the perimeter. Illinois, a good shooting team. Lester knocks it away. And a foul on Ronnie Lester. Ronnie hasn't lost his quickness. Uh, you can see when he came out of the zone that time and uh, reached in there trying to pick the pocket, and he just about had the job done. Just underway, 19-13 to go in the first half. Ronnie Lester, a three-point play. And Mark Smith has a little bit of trouble, gets it to Holcomb outside to Eddie Johnson. He burned the Hawkeyes a little bit earlier, and we have a foul underneath against Mark Smith, the senior from Peoria, Richwood High School. And so you have three team fouls on the Illinois, one on Iowa. One thing you want to do is keep Illinois off of the free throw line. They are the best free throw shooting team in the Big Ten this year. As a team, they go about 76%. You don't want them on the line. 
Ronnie Lester with the basketball to Kenny Arnold. Inside to Steve Preston. And the ball goes in. It would have been goaltending anyway. He has full become court pressure. Preston has probably become as physical as anybody in the Big Ten. Has to be Iowa's most valuable player right now down the stretch, uh, I would think. Certainly the Hawkeyes most improved. Absolutely would go along with that 100%, Rossi. Full court pressure. And the Illinois fighting line, I beat it. And the ball is tipped away by Lester and stolen by Boyle. Up ahead to Kenny Arnold. And it goes back to the orange and blue. Kenny Arnold playing a little different position. He's the off guard today. He has been the point guard when Ronnie Lester was out and Bob Hansen was in. Inside to Holcomb, and we'll have a foul on Steve Preston pushing off. Iowa has a 5 to nothing lead in the first 1 minute and 50 seconds. That's an interesting matchup, Derek Holcomb and Steve Craftison. Derek Holcomb transferred to Illinois from the University of Indiana. Steve Craftison transferred to Iowa from the University of North Carolina. And of course, you know that North Carolina and Indiana play pretty good basketball also. Perry Range in the corner to Reno Gray for the first two points for the Illini this afternoon. 5 to 2 the lead. Ronnie Lester brings it across the half-court stripe to Kenny Arnold, who was hotter than the Dickens at Thursday night. Whole Steve ball club. tip is no good. Boy, I'll tell you, they were 83-67. Shot well over 70% in the second half. And a blocking foul on Steve Wade. We'll see if the basket is good. And the foul was called by an Iowa man, Fred Jaspers, out of Waverly, Iowa, was uh, the man who called that. Uh, Fred's working along with uh, Bob Burson of Western Springs, Illinois, and uh, Gil Haggard of Glenview, Illinois. You've got Iowa playing Illinois. You've got two Illinois referees and one from Iowa. And going to the free throw line, Perry Range. The basket was good. It's five to four. And we're tied at five. So the first five points of the game go to the Hawkeyes. The second five to Illinois. And Lester is fouled by Reno Gray. Well, Ronnie hasn't forgot all of his tricks. Uh, Reno Gray just have found out. In the ballgame over at Champaign-Urbana, which Iowa won 72 to 71, Vince Brookins was in the starting lineup in that ball game, And Iowa didn't have Steve Waite and Steve Craftison both in the lineup at the same time. That wrinkle has developed since that time. Tied at five. Lester directing the offense. And we'll see just if a new man in there on the Hawkeye offense makes any difference. Of course, Bobby Hansen has been playing in that one guard spot opposite Kenny Arnold for so long. Iowa playing Illinois with four Illinois boys starting this ballgame. Arnold hits from outside, so he continues his hot streak. And Iowa goes on top seven to five. There's no question Iowa is a better team with Ronnie Lester. Offensively and defensively, they can put more pressure on you. You're seeing it right there on the defense. Gray is no good. Rebound to Eddie Johnson. Quickly inside. Derek Holcomb can't hit. And Illinois, a tall team, finally puts it up and in. It's tied at 7, 16-47 left in this first half. And so Iowa's got to go to the boards. Bob Hansen probably gives you a little better rebound strength than Ronnie Lester, because Hanson's six foot five, which is good size for a guard. Wade wanted to look inside, and Lester will shoot from out, and he's perfect, two for two on the afternoon. One of the reasons with Lester in there, you can see Del Campbell more on defense. Second foul called on Ronnie Lester in this ball game. Crowd not liking that. Iowa can gamble more on defense when Ronnie's in there, because quickness allows you to cover for each other. Four team fouls on each team so lots of foul calls in the early going keep in mind you do not want illinois at the free throw line as a team they are 72 percent on the season reno gray with the basketball and illinois a very patient team to try to attack that zone gray from outside and he hits from outside we're tied at nine this is potentially as good a shooting team as you'll probably find in the Big Ten. And they'll come off the bench with shooters. They've got lots of them. Ronnie Lester with five points already. He was averaging 16 before he was hurt after the last Minnesota game. He misses. Preston. 
is there to put it home. We're talking, talking about Chicago gets playing for Iowa, and you got four of them out there right now. 70% of Iowa's points this year have been scored by Chicago kids. In and out, and Waite comes down with a rebound. Quickly ahead to Ronnie Lester, no fast break possibility. And 50% of Iowa's rebounds this year have been by Iowa kids, and he's one of the reasons, Steve Waite. Kevin Boyle averaging over 12 points a game. Inside to Kraftison. It's a nice kiss off the glass, and it's 13-9. to nine. When, when you saw Kevin Boyle come out and direct the attack, now when we played Illinois at Champaign-Urbana at Assembly Hall, he was a guard in that particular ball game because Ronnie Lester wasn't there. Mark Gannon started the ball game. He was the guard, but the problem they had with Boyle was he was hoarse in that ball game, and uh, they couldn't hear him when he yelled out the offense. Mark Smith hits from the outside. 13 to 11 now. Smith averaging nearly 15 points a game. Quite a shooter. Over 54%. The best shooter, in fact, on the floor. I was almost got a double wing set right now. This is uh, Arnold, of course, with the ball, but they're working Boyle out a little further than he ordinarily comes off the baseline. Tight 2-3 zone employed by the Fighting Illini. And one of these times, there it is. Arnold can't hit. And the foul will be called inside on Eddie Johnson. He's hot. He doesn't like it. He doesn't care for that at all. I started to mention a moment ago, one of those times when they overload, Arnold will take the step into the gap and get the shot. He got the shot. It just didn't fall. Eddie Johnson is definitely having a personality problem. And Johnson will be replaced. He's so hot about it. And we'll get Neil Bresnahan in there. And Lou Hanson will talk it over with his star pupil. Johnson came in here scoring over 17 points a game. Bresnahan's 200 pounds on the six foot six out of Oak Park uh, in Chicago. Boyle passes up a shot. Gets it inside. Nice pass to Wade. He takes it in off the glass. Four point lead again. Bresnahan was a starter in this ball club last year. Matter of fact, he was the voted most valuable player in the Kentucky Invitational. 13.50 left. Inside to Mark Smith. Outside to Reno Gray. Gray will go to work on Kenny Arnold and pump from 14 and hit from 14. Two point lead again. 15.13. Boyle tries it. Prasteson goes up. I think we'll get a foul on Steve Waite. A little pushing off uh, on Steve, which will balance off the team fouls. And again, we say you don't want the Illinois on the free throw line, but they'll be there in a couple of more whistles. With all of the things going on, NCAA, NIT bid, uh, the Ronnie Lester thing, it's kind of lost in the shuffle, but Lute Olson is playing for his 100th win at Iowa in this ball game today. The century mark. There goes Ronnie Lester. Ronnie Lester will sit down. And Bobby Hansen, the freshman, who's done such a good job. Don't bet against that jersey being retired someday, incidentally. Get from Dowling High School in Des Moines. Uh, could be a good one. Bresnahan to Smith. Inside to Holcomb, and we'll get another foul. Six team fouls on the Hawkeyes, five on the Fighting Illini. This game is starting to look like the first half of that Indiana game. Remember, we had 29 personal fouls in that first half. Steve Waite's going to come out. Vince Brookins is going to come in for the uh, Hawkeyes. But uh, you're right. They're calling it uh, so different uh, in this ball game. But if Iowa goes into postseason tournament play, Bob, you could find quite addition, addition uh, different types of refereeing in different regions. Have to adjust to it. That's for certain that the Iowa Hawkeyes probably would not go to the Mid-East Regional. Probably go to the Far West, Midwest, or possibly the East Regional as an at-large team. 15-13. Iowa lead is cut now. It is, we are tied at 15. Mark Smith scores inside. Iowa's not playing the good zone that we've seen him play uh, before, but we've had several different switches in here in personnel, and that can uh, affect that to get used to each other. Brookins, who's in there, was red hot against Michigan. Probably the difference in the second half when the Hawkeyes came back to defeat the Wolverines. Now, if you had Gannon in for Hanson, you'd have the lineup that played almost all the way at Illinois. And Kenny Arnold travels with the basketball. And the Fighting Illini can go up this time down the court. Yeah. 
Illinois being very deliberate uh, as they come down across the line. And there with Gray and Reigns, Bresnahan. That's Derek Holcomb with the basketball. Mark Smith is playing inside. And Terry Reigns just traveled. You know, of all the people that'll be anxious for Iowa to get into that new arena one of these days, Illinois might be one of the most. They've lost 11 of the last 12 in this uh, field house. They're ready for a new arena in Iowa City. Lute Olson, in fact, is 9-2 and two against these fighting Illini. Both those losses came in 1978. Third state traveling call. Kenny uh, Arnold, guilty for two of them. And indicating that you've got tightness in the ball game. In the line, line up number 33, Eddie Johnson, replacing. And Eddie Johnson Perry. will come back into the game for the fighting Illini. Perry Reigns will sit it out. Goes to show you just how long a college kid takes to read Dale Carnegie's book on how to win friends and influence people. He got his personality back. He almost plays with a sour look out there anyway. Bresnahan with the basketball to Holcomb. Inside to Smith, goes to work on the smaller boil. The height difference right there, very noticeable. That's Smith the first big six, seven. Illinois has got their first lead of the ball game, I believe, at 17-15. 17-15, exactly. Bobby Hansen outside to Arnold, who's had trouble with walking. Hansen inside to Kraftison, and it looks like he walked. Yes, he did. He did. Shuffled his feet before he went up. And we have a timeout on the floor with the score. <laughs> Illinois 17, Iowa 15. We'll be back in just a moment. 11.44 left in the first half. Illinois has come back to take a two-point lead over the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hawks led 15 to 11. Now it's 17-15. Just about the time that Ronnie Lester sat down, as a matter of fact. You're right. You know, we like to brag about how well we shot the other night uh, in that ball game. A 78% second half, 65% for the ball game. Eddie Johnson, who we're kidding about the sour look on his face, all he did was go 11 for 12 at Northwestern. 90 to 66 was the score of that game. Illinois over Northwestern. Craftison with the basketball. Brookens, fast break opportunity, misses the layup. And that's Derek Holcomb going the other way with it to Reno Gray. Speeding it up just a little bit from the deliberate tempo that we had just a little bit earlier. Craftison did a very good job of shutting off their uh, fast break threat. Craftison almost knocked it away again. And Brookins did, in fact, knock the ball out of bounds. Eddie Johnson looked around as to say, where's that guy with the whistle this time? Inside, tipped away. Smith had it. Now Boyle does. And he gets it to Kenny Arnold. We must have two teams that are very tight because of tournament chances. And Brookins will try it. He can't hit. Eddie Johnson comes down with a rebound. Ahead to Reno Gray. And Gray, a 105 break, will slow it down for a second. Smith inside to Johnson. He pushed off against Bobby Hanson. No foul is called. Bresnahan from outside. He'll hit it. 19-15. Iowa crowd not happy at all uh, on that. Definitely a body check. He pushed off to get free. The Hawkeyes need to get something going here halfway through the first half. Arnold inside to Boyle. He'll go over Holcomb. He can't hit. Oh. And Steve Prasteson goes over the back. His third personal. So Steve Prasteson, who was in trouble against Indiana and fouled out with about 12 minutes to go, will now sit down and Steve Waite will come in. Steve Prasteson leads Iowa in personal fouls with 78 on the season. He's fouled out of two ball games. Kenny Arnold leads that league, though. Kenny's fouled out of three ball games this year, as uh, has Steve Waite. Derek Holcomb going out, but they're not giving up any size when he does. Not very superstitious as anybody that wears number 13, Jim Griffin, 6'10", 200-pounder out of uh, Grandview, Texas. Take a look at the foul again. Watch Krasnison go over the back of Eddie Johnson. And back to live action, Johnson just hit the free throw. It's 20-15. to 15. The Fighting Illini have scored nine straight points. And Johnson will go for number two there at the free throw line. It's now 21 to 15, a six point lead. The Hawkeyes have gone stone cold since Ronnie Lester sat down. He started and scored the first five points for the Hawks. Iowa at Champaign had a nine point lead at one time in the second half. Biggest lead in the first half was six, led by four at halftime. Arnold looking to Brookins, goes the other way to Hanson. Good zone pressure defense employed there by the orange and blue. Arnold to Brookins. Inside to Wade, knocked away 
by big James Griffin. He's the only man on this Fighting Illini team who does not hail from the state of Illinois. Comes out of Grandview, Texas, a sophomore, 6'10". Iowa, Iowa's giving up a lot on the inside right now, though, with Kraftison out of there. Best way to get them out of that zone is somebody to start hitting the rainbows over it. And Wade hits inside. They'll take him that way, too, 21-17. Beautiful feed by Bob Hansen. 9.40 left in the first half now. Reno Gray against Kenny Arnold. He wanted the screen there from Bresnahan, didn't get it. Griffin outside to Gray. He'll pump from 19 and hit. You know, a lot of people have felt all along that Ohio State and Illinois might have the best overall uh, nine deep material in the league, and Illinois is showing it today. Brookings with the basketball, the cross-court pass. He likes that to Bobby Hansen. The freshman can't hit. And Johnson quickly gets the outlet pass to Mark Smith. Smith slows it down somewhat, between the leg dribble, out to Reno Gray, who'll slow it down. <laughs> Illinois can go up by eight, and Griffin knocks the man down, and no foul is called. All of a sudden, the whistles have stopped blowing. Well, they were going off uh, like an alarm clock there to start with. The Hawkeyes have got to get something going. 25-17, the biggest lead of the game. Arnold from way outside, he misses. Bobby Hansen will try it. No good. Hansen gets the rebound to Brookins. Brookins passes up a shot. Hansen looks inside to Wade. Wade's open for the left-hander. That's goaltending on Mark Smith. Well, what a difference a day can make, the songwriter said. Uh, Hawkeyes have Ronnie Lester coming back in. You take a look at replay. This is goaltending, uh, Bob, on the replay. No doubt about it. He hit it uh, before it started down. I think that Wade... In fact, threw the ball almost down, straight down. It, as soon as it left his hand, it was going down. Ronnie Lester is back into the lineup for the Hawkeyes right now. When he left, that's when things started to go sour for the Hawkeyes. 25-19, Illinois lead. And so you've got Hanson and Lester in there. The last time it was Lester and Arnold at the guards. Inside to Eddie Johnson, who scores over weight. And the Fighting Illini are posting extremely well inside with Griffin, Johnson, and Brookins from the outside. He'll hit. That's the one we need. That's exactly what you need. He's such a good, pure shooter. 27-21, under the eight-minute mark now. Some pressure employed by Ronnie Lester. The Illini have a little trouble bringing it up. Perry Range is slammed home by Johnson. Nice follow. The crowd wants offensive goaltending, but I think it was clean. Good slam in there by Indy Johnson. 29-21 with 7.30 left in the first half. Inside to Boyle. Outside to Vince Brooker. Lester slows it down somewhat. Gets it over to Bobby Hansen. And Lester will pump from 20. Doesn't get the good kiss. And Eddie Johnson with a power rebound. And the crowd a lot more into this game than they were the other night. That had to either be a foul or traveling. One or the other. The officials have lost control of this basketball game. That was right in front of Fred Jaspers, but it had to either be traveling or a foul. A lot of hand checking going on right now, and Perry Range hit. It's 31-21. We had about 10 fouls called in the first four minutes of this game. And timeout, Iowa Hawkeyes. They're down by 10, 31-21. We'll be back in just a moment. If you're wondering about the shot selection, uh, Bob, Iowa's 9 out of 21, only 43%. Illinois, 15 out of 22, 68% for the Illini. They were red hot against Northwestern. They're still red hot here Saturday afternoon. But a week ago today, they shot only 28% in the first half against Purdue at home. Steve Waite with the basketball. Steve Krasnison is out of the game because of three fouls. In the early going, Bobby Hansen to Lester, who's wide open, and he'll hit. Good feed by Hansen. Good bucket by Ronnie. Lester with seven points in the first half. The leading scorer for the Hawkeyes at this point. And you're seeing the speed of Lester pay off. All you can do when you're playing a team in the first half that's shooting 68% is hope to hang close by halftime and hope that they'll cool off in the second half. Bobby Hansen will pump. 
It can't hit. The rebound to Eddie Johnson, who has a slew of them, to range ahead to Reno Gray. Gray penetrates nicely, blocked by Steve Waite, almost half-heartedly, and Bobby Hanson has the layup. The ball is knocked out of bounds. No foul is called. No foul. Iowa crowd, and up off the bench came uh, Lou Dole's that time. He doesn't want to see Bob Hanson hurt a fan. Watch Bob Hanson, number 24, dribbling right-handed. Now the left hand, that's the sore hand. Eddie Johnson coming from behind. Hanson lays it up. Good block by Eddie Johnson. I don't think Hanson was fouled. Very good, clean block. Good call by the officials. A very good call. Ronnie Lester up against Kevin Bontemps, who is now in the basketball game for the Fighting Illini. He's number 20. Tipped away by Johnson. It'll go out of bounds to the Hawkeye. It's Eddie Johnson hustles. He's a good basketball player. Kevin Bontemps, you'll remember him. He's the man who got the second opportunity for the Fighting Illini in that 72-71 victory that the Hawkeyes had earlier at Champaign-Urbana. And just a freshman. And Vince Brookins hits from the outside. All of a sudden, a 10-point lead is a 6-point lead. 31-25 with 5-15 remaining. Some of us are old enough to remember when his dad won a gold medal in the Olympics. His name was Ron, too. Eddie Johnson looks inside to Griffin, over to Range, and traveling is the call on Range. Shuffle his feet before he dribbles. And you, they're feeling the pressure of Ronnie Lester being in there right now. Now, Iowa has four straight unanswered points, and uh, the Hawkeyes have a chance to get back in the ballgame here with 5.02 to play, down by six. And Range will sit down right now to think that one over. Neil Bresnahan, the 6'6 senior out of Oak Park, comes back into the basketball. So lots of substitutes employed by the fighting Illini. Brookins had a chance for it inside and just couldn't see it and tipped it out of bounds. Boyle tried to lay the soft alley-oop in there. That's a pretty coordinated uh, thing, but it just led him a few inches. Bresnahan inbounds the ball to Bontemps. Bontemps a good dribbler, and Lester tries for the steal, doesn't get it. Bontemps outside to Bresnahan. He can't hit. Smith way up in the air. He almost traveled. Tipped up and up and again. And Brookins comes down with it. And a foul on Smith. Boy, can you imagine with that kind of a mix master, all those elbows and all that contact, how bad Steve Crafterson would like to be in there. You can see Smith get his hand in there. Boyle got the shove, and the way he went uh, into Brookins. So Arnold comes back into the basketball game for Bobby Hansen. The Hawks down by six. And for Illinois, number 44, Gary Polkos. This is a much smaller lineup than you've seen most of the year for the Hawkeyes. Wait, a big guy, of course, at 6'10". Brookins, Boyle, Lester, and Arnold in here. In fact, this was the lineup that many had expected to start and go this year for the Hawks. It just didn't turn out that way. Arnold tries to post. Gets it over to Boyle, has a little trouble with the handle. He had to unload to somebody or travel. Arnold tries it outside. He'll be the man that directs the offense this time. Arnold against Gray, gets it outside to Kevin Boyle. Boyle over to Lester. Lester's the man with a hot hand right now. He has seven points. Brookins from outside. Soft touch, 31-27, six straight points for the Hawks. And the crowd comes to life right now. Gray, good penetration, off-balance shot, rings home. You can't do a whole lot about that one. When the off-balance one goes in, there's not much you can do. Lester will try it. And Lester might be hurt. Grimacing on the ground, he might be hurt. Lester might be hurt. Lute Olsen up Lute Olsen is up. Very concerned. You we'll take a look it at it. again. He's limping. He comes up. He's limping just a little bit. Watch number this Take a look at it again. He's going to pass over here to Lester. Lester starts to drive, and he tripped and went down. And uh, I don't think that he was fouled, Bob. I think maybe the knee just gave out a little bit. He wasn't fouled at all. Mark Smith tried to knock the ball away. And Lester has kind of a pained expression on his face. We'll see if it hampers him much Doesn't right now. To. Smith will go up, and he'll hit. So after the Hawks ran off six straight points, 
The Fighting Eye and I come back with four of their own. It's 35-27, an eight-point lead with 3.15 to go. And Lester appears to be okay. If he wasn't, Lou Olson would not have him in there. He loves the guy. Vince Brookins tries to go to the left side. Gets it to Arnold. Good penetration. And he doesn't get the nice kiss off the glass. Boyle, nice steal. Eddie Johnson appealed to the referee that time, and he just shook his head. A lot of fouls called early, and now it's a very loose game, in fact. Brookins against Johnson, out to Boyle, inside to Waite. Waite posting against Holcomb. Can't hit. Mad scramble for the basketball. We'll have a jump. There's some real contact down there. Lute Olson said last week that some of the injuries to the Hawkeyes in the Big Ten could be prevented by better refereeing. I think today is a Class A example of how the Big Ten needs to take a look at it. And we'll have a timeout with Illinois on top 35 to 27. We'll be back in just a moment. Bob Hogan, Frosty Mitchell with you at the Iowa Fieldhouse where Illinois leads 35 to 27. Bob uh, Darrell Wyrick, he's executive director of the University of Iowa Foundation, directing the campaign to raise the money for the new arena. It said today that the enthusiasm and generosity of the people of Iowa has been very encouraging. He announced today that they've reached the $3 million mark in the move towards their goal of $8.5 million. Says they've kicked off a lot of regional campaigns. They're going to kick off even more. We have a jump ball. Vince Brookins against Holcomb, and the Hawks control the tap. And stolen away by Bresnahan. No foul is called. Bresnahan, a clean steal, it appeared. Taking the ball away from Steve Wade, and Reno Gray has it now against Ronnie Lester. 2.27 left in the first half, and now we have a whistle. Vince Brookins fouls Eddie Johnson, who will go to the free throw line. You know, the best thing that can happen to this ball game is for halftime to come, and uh, hoping the officials can get their act together, because somebody could get hurt. Definitely out of control at this point. Lots of fouls in the early going, and then all of a sudden it started getting rough and no whistles were being blown. Eddie Johnson at the free throw line. And he's a great free thrower. Puts the Fighting Illini up by nine. Johnson hitting 68% from the line. Hits the second one. 37-27, a 10-point lead. That equals the biggest for the Fighting Illini here this afternoon. Iowa was down by 10, got it to four, but uh, Illinois has uh, answered the charge. Arnold into the corner to Boyle, to Ronnie Lester. Lester to Brookins, who gets it over to Arnold. Good pressure defense by the Fighting Illini. Iowa's definitely handicapped inside without Craftison. Craftison sitting on the bench with three fouls. And Brookins gets it to Arnold, who's wide open now. And he hits from outside, 37-29 with 1.49 remaining. Kenny Arnold has four points. Hawkeyes showed some pretty good patience that time, waiting for the shot they wanted. And Reno Gray turns it over under pressure from Vince Brookins and Kevin Boyle. No question he did turn it over that time. He's shaking his head. And uh, Coach Lou Henson is agreeing to the referee. They could call him for not giving the ball to the referee, but apparently they won't at this particular point. Kevin Boyle inbounds the basketball to Ronnie Lester. Lester has slowed down a little bit since he went down in Grimace. And Vince Brookins hits from the outside and four straight points make it 37-31. And full court pressure again. Bresnahan and stolen by Boyle who puts it up. And Brookins goes up and can't get it. Reno Gray the other way. Two on one and Gray pumps. And gets the basketball inside to Mark Smith who can't hit. We'll go the other way. Boyle to Ronnie Lester, and Gray just ripped it out of his hands. This is the back alley right now. This is garbage time in the final minute. Lester from outside. He can't hit. Holcomb, and we go the other way. Four straight fast break opportunities. Neither team has scored, and finally, Mark Smith puts it through the hoop. 39-31 with 45 seconds to go. This looks like Nevada, Las Vegas out there playing against Oral Roberts instead of Iowa against Illinois. Well, what will the Hawkeyes do? They're not going to wait for one. And Lester is fouled by Reno Gray. 
And the crowd is not cheering Ronnie Lester. They're applauding the referee for remembering how to inhale, then exhale. In that order, and then the whistle sounds. And Lester, Iowa's best free thrower, has not been at the line for several weeks. But uh, he's still, percentage-wise, the best you've got, 82.5. Amongst those that have been playing regularly, Vince Brookins at 77.1. So a time to get a breather here with 35 seconds left in the first half. It was pretty wild and woolly there for a while. <laughs> Illinois leads 39-31, and Vince Brookins is going to sit down. He was as much a part of that action as anyone was, stripping away the ball a couple of times and getting a couple of rebounds. That looked like a Chinese ping-pong game. That was whipping back and forth over that 10-second line. At the free throw line, Ronnie Lester. That's the, the first, first time he'd been so there good. in 10 ball games. A little bit short on the shot there. Lester can pull the Hawks to within seven with 35 seconds left to go in the first half. A little bit more length on that one, and it's 39 32. Full court pressure again put in by the Hawkeyes. Holcomb with the basketball, quickly ahead to Mark Smith. Smith slows it down a little bit. They just might go into a patience game and take that last shot. And Rob Judson has come in there for Reno Gray. And he's a great outside shooter. Range yeah. with the basketball, there's that four corner, 13 seconds left to go in the first half. Smith all the way, and the foul is on Kevin Boyle with eight seconds left in the first half. The ball stripped away, and Boyle called for the foul. So Mark Smith will go to the free throw line to shoot one and one. Boyle's first personal. Mark Smith is their best free thrower at 80% uh, amongst the regulars. They really have some outstanding free throw shooters. Reno Gray at 80%. Bob Justin with 90% from the line. Kevin Bontemps uh, back in for the final eight seconds. Get a ball handler in there, a good defensive specialist. And the first one is good, and an eight-point lead, 40-32. to 32. The Hawks will have to come quickly and shoot at the other end if they want to cut into this deficit that they have right now. Young Matt, the line, Mark Smith, played the same high school team with uh, Derek Holcomb. Smith hits them both, 41-32. And another change in there for Illinois. Neil Bresnahan comes in for Mark Smith. Put eight seconds to get it down court. That's the defensive unit coming in. Ronnie Lester quickly to Bobby Hansen. Knocked away. And we go the other way with three seconds left. Harry Rage inside. And I think the buzzer went off. And that'll be the end of the first half. 41-32 at halftime. We'll be back for some halftime activities in just a moment. 41-32, Illinois at halftime. We'll be back in just a moment. You're watching some of the winners of the Elk Poop Shoot Contest here at halftime. Bump Elliott congratulating some of the winners. 41-32, Illinois over Iowa. Iowa took an early 5-0 lead. In fact, Ronnie Lester making the start here after an emotion-packed pregame show. Got the first three on a three-point play in the first, first shot of the afternoon, as a matter of fact. Fighting a line, I came back to take a 17-15 lead, and then Steve Krasnison picked up his third foul with 10-25 left in the first half. The Fighting Illini and I were off and running. It was really a sloppy first half, as a matter of fact, Frosty. Bob, I think pressure might have been part of that, or emotion from the Ronnie Lester retire the shirt off my back that we started out with, plus the fact that that time the Hawkeyes found out that Purdue had beaten Michigan State, 91 to 73. Little disappointment. They knew then that they were playing for fourth place at best, and uh, now they face another mountain to climb. They know that uh, they've got to come from nine down to get possibly the NCAA bid. They probably feel they got the NIT bid uh, in their hip pocket. So there was some emotion. There was some disappointment. There was some tightness. We saw turnovers that you don't ordinarily see uh, this late in the season. For Iowa, it's game number 27. For Illinois, it's game number 30. I guess we'll see what happens here in the second half. And we'll be back in just a moment. In the Johnson County Red Cross Swim Across on March 8th and 9th in the Fieldhouse School. that's up all over 
uh, Iowa at the present time. And we mentioned that Daryl Weirich, executive director of the University of Iowa Foundation, eight and a half million dollars for the new arena, announced today very happily they've already passed the three million dollar mark. They've kicked off many regional campaigns in Iowa the last several weeks, and many more will be conducted over the next six months. Weirich said that he urged everyone who wants to work on the campaign or to contribute to it to contact the campaign headquarters at the University of Iowa Foundation Alumni Center in Iowa City. Or if you want to give them a call, the area code 319, the number is 353-6271. But the happy news is they're, well, they're more than 30% of the way home. Three million out of eight and a half million dollars. A lot of money, a lot of money there. We got some of the halftime statistics for you. Let's go over some of the individual scoring. Steve Krasison, who has three fouls, also has six points for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Steve Waite with six. Kenny Arnold with four. Ronnie Lester making his triumphant return here this afternoon has eight points. Vince Brookins has eight. More importantly, Kevin Boyle and Bobby Hansen have not scored in the first half. For the Fighting Illini, Reno Gray has 10. Eddie Johnson with 12. And Mark, Mark Smith, I should say, has 10 points. Terry Range with five. And Griffin with two. Bresnahab with two points. So that's the way it looks right now. And I ahead 41 to 32. We'll be back in just a moment. 15 turnovers a ball game, and you've already had nine in the first half. And uh, against a team that didn't press you that hard. Of course, it got really wild and woolly there for a while. Both teams just going back and forth and couldn't seem to get the transition game going. They needed just to slow it down and control it just a little bit, I think. Bob, you know, if there's anything as scary at this point, it's not the point margin to me, the 41-32. Nine points in the 1980 basketball isn't that much. Uh, Lute Olson will coach that the next two minutes, the first two minutes of the second half, will probably decide the ball game if Illinois goes up further or if Iowa can cut it down. But this game's already had a 13-point turnaround, I believe. Iowa was up uh, five to nothing. But the fact, uh, season long, Illinois has been a better second-half team than first half. Iowa, I think statistically, has not been a good second half team. We led Ohio State by 10 and lost on this floor. We led uh, Indiana by 8 and lost on this floor in the second half. And we led Illinois over there by 4 at halftime. Some incredible things definitely have happened during the season in the second half. The Iowa basketball team is uh, kind of a little bit like the Iowa football team. Having a little bit of trouble sometimes in the second half. The only changes here in the starting lineup as we start the second half Rob Judson will be in there in replace of Reno Gray, who had several turnovers himself, traveling, turning the ball over. Again, you're just looking at some film from the uh, first half or videotape of the first half uh, action going out there, and uh, Lute Olson's going for broke. He's starting Steve Craftison. I think he has to at this point. Craftison back in there. He'll jump center along with Arnold, Boyle, Wait, and the man everybody came to see here this afternoon, Ronnie Lester. His number 12 will be retired final, following his final game. 41-32, the final 20 minutes of the regular season here at the Iowa Fieldhouse. The Hawks win the tip, and Arnold has it to Krasison. Now to Lester, who will pump from outside. He can't hit, but Boyle goes way upside and tips the ball out of bounds. Boyle does not have any points in this ball game, and full-court pressure now being employed by the Hawkeyes. And one of the best games he had this year was the game over at Champaign-Urbana. And Arnold knocks it away. So a lot of aggressive play in the early going from the Hawks as they tip the ball out of bounds a couple of times. That's Holcomb trying to inbound the basketball to Eddie Johnson, who had eight rebounds in the first half. He was skying all over the place. To Mark Smith, who had 10 points. And Johnson will shoot. He can't hit. Boyle's got it. We go the other way, four to three. So things keep going at this fast-paced clip. Boyle tries at baseline. Can't go to Krasison. Lester inside to Wade. He'll hook right hand, and it's a seven-point lead, a pretty hook. We saw a couple of those left-handed variety in the Michigan game. That's right. Makes him tough to cover. Lester almost fouls Smith. Head to Perry Range. He'll go to Johnson, and we'll get an offensive foul against Perry Range. That's unfortunate for the Fighting Illini because Johnson had an easy two. Take a look at this uh, yourself, and uh, you'll see him come charging in there. Craftison just holds his ground, takes the charge. That takes some courage, uh, incidentally. Blocking, taking your uh, charge of a 200-pounder. Especially when you have three fouls. Back to live action now. Lester trying to penetrate against range. 
He posts inside. Krasnison with a basketball now. Lester will pump from 15, and he'll hit. Well, Lester we mentioned, now with 10 points in double figures. We mentioned Lute Olsen says whoever wins the next two minutes might win the game. The Hawks are up 4-0. Eddie Johnson misses. And Lester in a hurry to Kenny Arnold. He can't hit. Johnson with another rebound. Well, he's doing a job on the glass. Definitely doing a job. I think he made a mistake there. He could have taken Krasnison to the basket, especially with Krasnison with three fouls. The man they definitely want to foul out. Inside, Arnold strips the ball away from Smith and will have a jump ball. All right, a little bit of a mismatch coming up on the jump ball. Take a look at it again right here. Arnold will be number 30. That's uh, Smith in there, number 42. Arnold reaches in, picks his pocket, gets free, but the referee says we'll have to jump it. Here we go live. Definitely a height advantage, and the Hawks win the tip. Three on two, fast break opportunity. Boyle to Lester. He misses from 15, and Derek Holcomb quickly the other way. And Perry Range wisely will slow it up just a little bit. Rob Judson is in there right now. That's Holcomb to Range to Judson. Judson doesn't want to shoot over Lester. Smith goes down the alley. And we have a foul on Kenny Arnold. Otherwise, we would have had an offensive foul called against Mark Smith against Steve Krasnison, who held his ground again. Hawks are working harder on defense uh, here in the opening minutes of the second half than they did uh, in the first half, realizing maybe the boards and defense is where they got hurt. This game has an appearance oh. unlike any other Big Ten game that I have seen this year. Lute Olsen saying what? He wasn't in the act of shooting. He was not in the act of shooting, but they're going to give him a unbelievable. Holy smoke. Referee must have forgot it. He was not in the act of shooting when the foul occurred. Olsen doesn't believe it. He had two technical fouls, you remember, last Saturday in a regionally televised game against Ohio State. And the second one is missed. It's 42-36 in the fighting line. I get the basketball back. Inside to Holcomb for Beautiful. the easy two. Well, the Hawkeyes got hurt on that possession. Three points. Lester against Reigns. Lester, good penetration outside to Kenny Arnold, who hit. 44-38. Full court pressure, Johnson. 2-2. And now we've got five on five again. Smith looking inside against Lester. He'll stop and go up. Nice touch. 46-38 with 17 remaining. About a four-inch height advantage uh, on that mismatch between Lester and Smith. And Lester definitely can't go up like he used to. Arnold looking inside. Lester trying to post. Krasnison from 18. Can't go. Lester inside Ooh. with a rebound, and he scores. How about that? You had the postman come outside, take the bump. And the ball goes off of Kenny Arnold's leg. Rob Judson heads up that time. Very heads up play by Rob Judson. He just bounced the ball off the legs of Kenny Arnold. He had Judson cornered there. And the fighting Illini will get the ball. Good call. Just barely gets that in a cross-court pass. Boyle with the foul, and it's a late call. A delayed call. And he knew it. He reached around behind on uh, Rob Judson out of Zion, Illinois. Rob was uh, coached by his dad, Phil Judson. A lot of people will remember uh, Phil, I'm sure, and his brother, who were great ones uh, at uh, Illinois. Then there was, uh, he was a twin, Phil and Paul, and then there was Howie, who pitched for the Chicago White Sox. They've been quite a family. Eddie Johnson guarded by Kevin Boyle. Cross courts it to Judson. A good shooter. Just that, gets it over the front rim. That's the shot he tried in the last seconds of Champagne that didn't go down. And Iowa won. 48 to 40 with 16 minutes to go. And Lester turns around and fires. And Range puts his hand up immediately. And it's like the Ronnie of Lester of old is in there right now. Playing offense with abandon. Lester with 12 points, and Perry Range has two fouls, the second team foul against the Fighting Illini. On the season, your best percentage free thrower, Ronnie Lester, one official was arguing they weren't going to go to the line. Golly, they'd have to. A couple of changes right now. Derek Holcomb limped off, and the trainer comes over to take a look at his left foot or left ankle. 
And Ronnie Lester will be shooting to James Griffin into the lineup for the Fighting Illini. Ronnie will be playing in the Aloha Classic uh, in Hawaii. That's a couple of ball games over there. Also in the Pizza Hut lineup uh, in Las Vegas later this year. And we hope either NIT or NCAA. 48-42. Lester hits them both. 16 minutes to go. And good full court pressure. If you head to Griffin against Craftison. High Archer no good. Boyle with the rebound. And keeps that foot firmly planted ahead to Ronnie Lester. They can cut the lead to four points now. And this Fieldhouse crowd, which has been rocking all afternoon, is up on its feet again. Inside to wait and knocked out of bounds off the Hawkeyes. And it appeared that it should have gone the other way. Well, I think Illinois tipped it into Waite, and uh, Waite just couldn't get the handle on it. And we have a timeout. The score, 48-42 Illinois. We'll be back in just a moment. Go the other way, and Craftison gets it smartly ahead to Boyle. Just an incredible sequence of events here. Watch as we go the other way. Arnold gets the basketball inside to Craftison. And that's the basket that cut the lead to two points. We're back live now with 13.56 remaining. Bob Hogue and Frosty Mitchell at the Iowa Fieldhouse. Craftison has two straight buckets on two great feeds. Arnold and Hanson each have made great inside passes. Judson trying to beat that full court pressure. And Bresnahan is wide open. Kevin Boyle left Bresnahan wide open. And it's 52 to 48. Good pass from Judson. Gavin also respecting his importance foul-wise. He had eight minutes on the bench at Ohio State last Saturday afternoon. Wouldn't foul him. Arno from outside. Gets the nice kiss off the glass. 52-50. Well, so Arnold right. quickly has 10 points. Excuse me there, Frosty. Illinois attempting to beat the Iowa press by strictly shooting, which is pretty hard to do for a whole half. Almost an over-and-back violation. Bresnahan just barely made it. Eddie Johnson, who has a whole slew of rebounds, gets another one. And the foul inside on Steve Craftison. And the Fieldhouse crowd does not like the call. Well, we'll have to take another look at we'll that. Have to take if we another can. look at it. We were screened off. Here we come. Take a look at this. You be the referee. Watch him come down. Eddie Johnson has the ball. Eddie Johnson will make the inside move. Craftison looks to have position. Eddie Johnson reached right over, knocked him over. That is a bad, bad call, and it's a critical call in this ball game because it's the fourth foul on Craftison. And there was indecision there whether or not Eddie Johnson was shooting. Johnson wanted to shoot two free throws. The officials had made an incorrect call on one of those earlier in the second half. 52-50 with 13 minutes left. Steve Craftison now playing with four fouls. You'll remember that he fouled out against Indiana, and things just turned around when he had to sit down. And for the last few weeks, so goes K, so goes Iowa. Judson to Bresnahan. Both teams being cautious now. Smith inside to Holcomb, and he double dribbles. Big turnover. Why they were trying to go inside. They know they've got Craftison playing tentative right now, but Iowa switched over and had Boyle go to the inside, and uh, so the strategy did not work at that particular point. Hawkeyes. Have the crowd talking to him, Bob. They're a part of this ball game, and now you come down shooting for a tie. Steve Craftison will sit down. Steve Waite comes in for him. 52-50. The Hawks can tie it up. Waite can't get to the pass. It's knocked away. Bobby Hansen, a bad pass there. Rob Judson in a hurry. Good transition to the defense. Iowa doesn't lose anything defensively with Waite in there. They give up something offensively. Bobby Hansen with a ticky-tack foul. Four Look. team fouls Bob on the Hawkeyes in the second half. Excuse me, Bob. Hanson was trying to make a frustration recovery. He knew he'd made the bad pass on the other end. Now he's trying to play the tough defense to get the ball back. But two wrongs don't make a right. Judson against Arnold. Two thirties meeting head on. And now Smith will try it. He'll get out of the lane. And Judson will try to penetrate. Good zone defense employed by the Hawkeyes, and the fans are appreciative. Quite a battle going on inside between Vince Brookins and Eddie Johnson. A lot of pushing off going. Smith with a nice move, and we have a foul underneath. It will go against Steve Waite. And that's three on Waite. 
He had a big smile on his face. I don't know whether he, that meant agreement or disagreement with the call. We're at 11.54. Iowa so far has won the second half of this ball game by seven points. It's a long ways from over. And Mark Smith will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. He's a good free thrower. On most teams, he could be the best. On this team, he's 80%. Mentioned earlier that Rob Judson is the number one free throw shooter for this Illinois team, 90%. They made some both. 54-50 is now the lead with 11.54 to go. They made 25 out of 26 this year against Northwestern to set a school record. Kenny Arnold looking inside. Steve Waite posting in against Derek Holcomb. Arnold to Brookins, and he hit. That's the man who came alive in the second half against Michigan and just blew the Wolverines out of this field house. 54-52 with 11.30 left. Holcomb looks inside. Eddie Johnson, good baseline move on Brookins. Good tip on Bresnahan, and he also fouled. He came over the back. So 14 fouls against the Illini now. And Iowa just trying to get over the hump, trying to climb the mountain, get up to the plateau and get even at this particular point. Illinois has got a lot of bench. Uh, Rob Judson uh, going uh, out of there. Reno Gray, who actually was a starter from Hales Franciscan High School in Chicago, is back in. Gray had some problems there in the first half, especially in the turnover department. The Hawks can tie it. 54-52. Bobby Hansen goes baseline. And we're tied at 54. You know, he took that shot because he's going to be forced into a jump ball. There was nowhere to go. And Hanson, only his first two points of the game. He's been scoring a lot more than that, obviously, as of late. Smith to Gray. Iowa playing so much better defense this second half than they did the first. Eddie Johnson to Holcomb. And good passing by the Illini. Nice move there by Smith. And we go the other way. Three on two. Boyle, one man to beat. And Iowa back on top for the first time since the opening moment, 56 to 54. And Kevin Boyle's first two points of the afternoon. You've now had an 11-point turnaround in the second half of this ball game in 10 minutes. The ball almost tipped away. Gray will try it from the corner. And he quiets the fieldhouse crowd. We're tied at 56. Illinois wanting an NIT bid. Iowa has one wanting an NCAA bid. That's the what you're playing for right now, as well as fourth place in the Big Ten for the Hawkeyes. And we have 10 minutes to decide the issue. And Kenny Arnold hit after Reno Gray went down. And Arnold, in fact, turned around and said, what happened? How come you went down? Arnold was actually a little bit concerned that Gray had hurt himself. But Gray's back in there. And Lou Henson wants a timeout with Iowa in the late 58-56. We'll be back in just a moment. Iowa has made six shots in a row. And we're going to take a look at one of them. Brookins looking inside. Watch he'll go to Arnold. Watch Gray go down. And then Arnold with a nice move. You know, with Ronnie that basket, Lester is going to go Iowa's back into the uh, game there, Frost. Excuse with me. With that basket, Iowa's shot percentage in the second half goes 12 for 17. That made a 71% in this half. Illinois has cooled off from uh, that 58% at halftime to 43% in the second half. The Illini have the ball out of bounds. Reno Gray. Ronnie Lester. The timeline. And Ronnie Lester, yeah, as I mentioned there, is still is back into the basketball game. Bresnahan looking inside. Quite a battle going on between Griffin and Waite. And the Hawks come away with a steal. Lester with it right now. Lester has 14 points. That's team high. Mark Smith with 17 is game high. Steve Wade outside. Bobby Hansen commits himself a little bit too early. And Hansen probably should have been called for the foul after a fourth shot. But no foul call was made. 8.55 left now. The Hawks lead is two. And Wade steals it. And Hansen gets the basketball to Ronnie Lester. A three-guard offense being employed in there. This is the smallest lineup that you'll probably see from the Hawks. Illinois. Lester, Hansen and Arnold in there with Waite and Brookins. Illinois uses a four-guard offense, which you hardly ever see. Brookins from the charity stripe. He can't hit it. We can't stand prosperity all of a sudden. 
The timeout there called by Lou Hanson, a good one. And Lester will go down. Nothing called. Lester a little bit slow to get up. Nice move by Bresnahan inside, and we're tied at 58. Lester's okay. He was trying to draw the offensive foul. With the time ticking off, Craftison's opportunity to get back in gets better and better. You're down at the 8.05 mark. And in fact, Kevin Boyle and Steve Craftison are waiting to come in at the scorer's bench. Tied at 58. Kenny Arnold outside to Vince Brookins. They put on quite a show the second half against Michigan. And a foul inside. We'll see who whether it's this. Oh, had a hold of Waits' uh, crunch as he went by. Okay, it's against Neil Bresnahan, his second personal. Here's a look at it. Watch, uh, you'll see replay coming uh, through the lane right there. He just can't fight his way through in a moment. On this uh, replay, maybe you can see where the foul came. It was, uh, there you are, Wait, trying to get through. Holcomb had a hold of him. Okay, you're back live, Bob. We're back live with 7.49 to go. That's a worried Lou Henson right there. Iowa has Craftison and Boyle both back in. Craftison will try it, and the foul is on Griffin, and Craftison will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Steve has been there more than anybody else this year. He's gone to the line 122 times, and he's made 64% of those. Craftison has had his tough afternoons at the free throw line. It's a situation that one more foul by the Illini, and it'll be a one and one. 16 fouls now on the Illini, and that first win is good. Iowa will shoot on every whistle the rest of the way in this ball game, and that could be important. Iowa has five team fouls himself, and that was Griffin's first personal. Eddie Johnson steals another rebound. And the Illini can now go up by one with seven and a half left in the ball game. Lester knocks it away from Bresnahan. Bresnahan recovers. The old Ronnie Lester would have been able to probably get there and retrieve it. Of course, the new Ronnie Lester doesn't look too bad at all himself. Half of Ronnie Lester is better than anybody else. Well, here's Dame Fortune again. Ox can go up by three. Craftison posting inside. Rejected by Griffin, but Brookins recovered. Under seven minutes now. And Lester from downtown. No good. Craftison. And he traveled. Took a couple of steps. Good call. A very good call inside. Craftison shuffled his feet after he got the rebound before he went up. Yeah, the crowd didn't like it, but it was definitely a good call. Iowa goes out of their full court pressure at this uh, particular point, dropping back to half court. Iowa's lead is 59 to 58, 645 left. Final six minutes and 45 seconds at the Iowa Fieldhouse in the regular season this year, and then we'll wait for the postseason bid. Illinois goes on top. Reno Gray hits from the outside. 60-59 now. Oh, could this be another one of those? Whoever has the ball in the last possession again. Iowa, of course, beat Illinois 72-71 for their 10th straight victory earlier in the year. Brookins with a nice pass to Lester. He has trouble finding it. Boyle now over to Brookins, who's come the other side. And Craftison and Griffin struggle for the basketball, and Griffin knocks it out of bounds. Three of the last five Iowa games have been decided with the ball in the air when the buzzer went off. Lester will inbound it. Finds Boyle. And then Lester comes out on top. Definitely slowed things down here. Lester with good penetration. Brookins travels. Has a tendency to do that. He'll shuffle his feet before he goes to the dribble. And he got caught again. We very easily could be having a season high as far as uh, turnovers in Big Ten ballgames are concerned on the Iowa side. Boyle almost steals. Gray was not awake right there. He was just kind of bouncing the ball around, oblivious to all, and Boyle almost had a steal. Smith looks inside. Boyle tips it away. Smith recovers. He's exhausted his dribble, so he gets it to Gray. Gray almost turned it over again to Perry Range. 5.35 left now. Illinois very patient, and Boyle almost steals it. The ball will go out of bounds to the Illini. Boy, that guy is hustling, working all the time. Kevin Boyle. 
What a defensive specialist. Lou Henson wants the timeout. And Henson wants a timeout. Illinois on top, 60 to 59. We'll be back in just a moment. The corner, but the man did not see the pass. Lou Henson is saying that's not what we talked about at the timeout, I'm sure. Ronnie Lester with it right now. Steve Krasis in playing with four fouls, has it stolen by Derek Holcomb, who's in the game now for Griffin. Eddie Johnson almost traveled, and Krasis almost picked up foul number five. And instead, the foul will go against Mark Smith over the back. So Iowa should be shooting uh, the rest of the ball game. That's 4.59 left in the ball game. You take a look at it uh, right here and decide uh, whether or not uh, on this replay where the foul uh, occurred on the drive inside. They're up and they'll try and keep the ball alive, batten it back up there. And you see the contact is Brookins. They tried to go over his back and uh, you'll have Boyle going to the line. That's a pretty good man to have, Bob. Actually, I never saw the foul committed. Mark Smith seemed to be away from the play just a little bit. Steve Krasis then taking his life into his hands there. He has four fouls, could have almost picked up number five there. And Boyle will hit the front end of the one and one. That's so very important. The Iowa Hawkeyes are the worst free throw shooting team in the Big Ten. 72% on the season, this fellow, though. Boyle will try it again to put the Hawks up by one, 61-60, and he'll do it. What a picture of concentration. I don't know. Snap on the safety belt. Here we Not go. anything can happen. Lester always working for the steal. A good switch there by Arnold and an off-balance shot. Arnold gets the pass from Krasnison. Arnold, one man to beat. It's range, and Arnold puts it up and in. And it's 63-60, a three-point lead for the Hawkeyes with 4.34 left. And an offensive foul against Perry Range. An Academy Award to Kenny Arnold. He just fell down. Range never touched him. And Lou Henson is really unhappy. Take a look at Kenny Arnold come down and protect the ball with his body. As he comes up this time, he's protected. Now he's up for the shot. It's going to go up. And it's a big, big bucket when they title, total up for the tallies. Get on in there. Thought for a minute, uh, Illinois is going to go up and go 10. Boyle had ideas of his own to tip it in. 4.25 left now, a three-point lead. The Hawks can go up by five. Krasnison with a power move. A five-point Iowa Hawkeye lead, 65-60 to 60 with 4.15 left. 14-point turnaround in the second half. Hawks' biggest lead, 4.11. Wow. The crowd can smell an NCAA berth and a foul on Krasnison. He will foul out. Not a smart foul. Eddie no, Johnson wasn't. will go to the line, and Steve Krasnison will sit down. A silly foul on the outside as Eddie Johnson tried an off-balance shot. Well, the special K has been something here during the last uh, four or five ball games. Really taking charge, and he had himself a decent day. What do you have on your scorecard for him? Steve Krasnison with 13 points. Of course, a whole slew of rebounds. Didn't play eight minutes of the first half. We have some big free throwing coming up. Eddie Johnson, who has 12 points, they were all in the first half, is at the free throw line and can cut that lead to three. And Eddie Johnson, who had been perfect from the free throw line, four of four, Numbers. misses that first opportunity. He's the seventh best scorer in the Big Ten at 16-9, fifth best in rebounds, eight a game. 65-60. Second one, no good as well. And, and we'll the see Hawks what can Lou go Olson. up by seven, yes. What's he going to do with 3.55 and a five-point lead? And Kraftison done for the day. Four corners. And Ronnie Lester, who can direct that four-corner better than just about anybody in the country. And the Fieldhouse crowd is up with a standing ovation as the Hawks try to work off that final three minutes and 35 seconds. And remember, any whistle, you go to the line. That's important when you're into the four quarters is that you will go to the line. And, of course, Iowa wants to go to the line with those people, either Lester, Arnold, or Boyle. Not necessarily Wait. They'd like to have Brookins go to the line. Wait just gets it to Arnold. Remember, the Hawks have to penetrate that hash mark. And Arnold does a good job. Gets it to Wade. He's the outlet. And you notice Wade doesn't keep it long because they don't want him to get the foul. Three minutes, 
left in this ball game. And Illinois cannot call a timeout when Iowa has the basketball. And Boyle is fouled. That's who you want. By Mark Smith. Kevin just made his last two. 2.56 left. And Mark Smith now with four fouls. So he is in trouble. He is the leading scorer on the ball game with 17 points. Lou Henson is not making any defensive changes here. I thought he might when the clock would stop to get some defensive players in there. He doesn't have the men with Holcomb and Johnson in there that he wants necessarily against the four-corner offense. Boyle is perfect from the line this afternoon. Two of two. He has four points, all of them coming in the second half. And the front end of that one and one, so important, goes perfectly through the net. Isn't it funny how quiet 13,500 can be? There's the change I was looking for. Derek Holcomb is a big, rugged fellow, but he doesn't have the quickness to play the defense. Griffin will come in and Holcomb out. So Boyle will try to put the Hawks up by seven points. A transplant from Illinois here in Iowa. Boy, is he valuable. And it is good. The St. Lawrence High School product puts in four in a row, and it's 67 to 60 with 250 left. See what the Illini can do right now. Post Smith inside. And the most important thing there was not give up a three-point play. Technical. And a technical foul on Mark Smith for touching the ball while it was out of bounds. Used to be known as a dead ball foul, a technical, and a not very smart foul. Well, I imagine Boyle will be the guy. He's made four in a row, even though Lester's the better percentage. And Mark Smith talking it over with the official. He doesn't like to call, but you just can't talk, touch that basketball yep, when Luke's, it's out of bounds. Luke's going to go with Boyle. He's hot. He made four in a row. You only get one on this. The technicals on the bench, you get two. You'll only get one on this, but you will get the basketball. Two minutes, 40 seconds. Kevin Boyle is the man down there. Five of five on the afternoon. Looking back at what has happened here this afternoon, it was tied at 54 with 10.54 left. Then Illinois had a 60 to 59 lead. And now all of a sudden it's 68 to 62 with 240 left. And Lester inbounds it successfully to Kenny Arnold. And the fact that Ronnie Lester has been able to play and play so much today is part of the Iowa argument to the NCAA because they'd like Ronnie Lester as a drawing card. Arnold battled in there by Gray. Rejected by Griffin. And that's the reason why he's in there and stolen back by Arnold. Foul by Arnold. And keep in mind, you're fouling a very good uh, free-throwing ball Mark club. Mark Smith will go to the free-throw line to shoot one and one. And both teams, take a look at this yourself. This is Arnold on the drive-in. You'll see the rejection batted back uh, out of there. But Arnold's going to hustle back and uh, get a retrieve. Uh, if he can, coming up uh, from behind, knocks it loose, goes for it. But they say he got a little flesh. Now we go to live action. And a good free-throwing basketball team goes one and maybe. One and one the opportunity. Mark Smith, the man of the hour. He hits it 68 to 63 with 220 left. Could be a battle of free throws down the stretch. Well, if it is, the statistics are in their favor. They're the, we're the four team in the league. They're the hot team in the league at the line. Down the stretch. It's Wait, Brooken, Boyle, Arnold, and Lester for the Iowa Hawkeyes, 68-64. Full court pressure. Brookens has it now. He'll try to get it back to Boyle, and they'll go the other way to Ronnie Lester, who was almost fouled there by Mark Smith. Boyle to wait. And the Hawks slow it down again with four-point lead, 2.05 left. And Lester, who can protect the basketball so well, gets a pass from Arnold to Boyle to wait now. 1.55 left, tipped away, and Lester saves it to Arnold. Great agility, fine body control. Keeping the poise, so important right now. And Boyle to wait, rejected again by Griffin, and a foul this time on big James Griffin. And so Steve Waite is only a 59% free thrower, and two things happen when Waite goes to the line with Craftison out of there. We'll take a look at a replay here on the uh, foul on uh, Waite. They dumped it off from Boyle. This is Waite coming across, and they foul Waite. He's the one they want to foul. 
two things happen. One, you put a poor free throw at the line, and two, you put Iowa's best rebounder away from the glass. But he crossed him up. A little bit of help from the rim and the glass right there. A five-point lead. The Hawks hitting the free throws. 69-64. 70-64 now with 1.42 left. That's statistics for you. Steve Wade says, I'll show you. Attaboy, waiter. The Illini have to score each time down. And Eddie Johnson, an off-balance shot. And Kevin Boyle is almost fouled. No call. He gets it to Ronnie Lester. Ahead to wait. He protects it very nicely to Arnold over to Boyle. Boyle will go all the way and try to ram it home. And a foul on Eddie Johnson. Let's take a look at this one again. Just an that incredible was be sequence. What in the slam dunk. Here comes Kevin driving down. He just took up a little bit too soon. And they got a hand uh, on the block. Almost, almost goaltending on that one, Bob. Boy, he was set to slam it home. Well, he's got a series of free throws going for him. Boyle has been perfect from that line so far this afternoon. 119 left. Boyle can put the Hawks up by eight points. And then you wait for Sunday. See if you get the NCAA bid. The first one, no good. This ball game's got a 16-point turnaround uh, in the uh, second half. Two o'clock tomorrow, the NCAA announcement. Three o'clock, the NIT. Of course, also tomorrow, Indiana and Ohio State. That game will be on NBC for the Big Ten Championship. 115 left. Boyle cannot hit either of them. And the Illini have to score this time down if they want to get back in it. Mark Smith, a nice turnaround against Steve Wade. 105 left, 70 to 66. And now it gets right down to the nitty-gritty, and Arnold wanting a foul offensive. Oh, offensive foul against Kenny Arnold. Perry Ray's doing a great job on the defense and we have a timeout with 58 seconds left well on that one uh, i would imagine there won't be any free throwing bob but uh, at least they get possession and right now possession is nine tenths of the law in a 70 66 ball game 58 seconds to go and a lot of things uh, can happen and have happened uh, down through the season and uh, this has been such a game of momentum. You know, Iowa led it five to nothing. Then you're down uh, in a 14-point turnaround at halftime by nine. You come back, we had at one time a 16-point turnaround here in the second half. So anything can happen, four points, 58 seconds. Remember that game earlier at Champaign-Urbana? The Hawkeyes had a lead of about nine or 10 points with a few minutes to go, and they couldn't hit their free throws down the stretch. The Illini came back, had a chance to win it there. And the Hawks were lucky to survive with a 72-71 victory. We were looking into the huddle of Lou Henson right there. Lou has been severely criticized all season long for substituting so much. They asked his wife, Mrs. Lou Henson, what do you think about all of this substitution? And she says, frankly, I don't care as long as it doesn't get into his personal life. <laughs> I thought it was a pretty good answer uh, for uh, the lady of a coach. What a tough job that must be. Well, nobody has left the field house. Wow, as uh, the Hawkeyes, you know, a couple of things a minute ago, Steve Waite made two for two, Kevin Boyle missed two. Those kind of things uh, statistically don't bear out. Now, they will not be shooting on the offensive foul, but possession is everything. And Illinois won't dare wait too long to put up the shot. Rob Judson in there right now, inbounds it to Mark Smith. Smith to Gray, looking for Judson, who's open from the outside, and he can hit from out there. Eddie Johnson. He's in deep with James Griffin, and it's Eddie Johnson for the baseline. And the Fighting Illini will call a quick timeout. It's 70 to 68. Nervous time, the final 44 seconds. And if people wonder why they called the timeout, all right? Iowa could have used five seconds uh, getting the ball inbounds right there after the basket. The clock doesn't stop. With 44 seconds to go, that means that Iowa would have started out with 39 seconds to go. This way, by them stopping the clock, calling the timeout, Iowa has to inbounds the ball when the inbounds man touches the ball with 44 seconds to go. And that five seconds coming down the stretch could be a very smart timeout. What do you think you do right here? Do you foul one of the Hawks and try to send him to the line and hope they miss? Well, I think they're probably uh, give Iowa a chance maybe to turn it over against their press. But after Iowa penetrates the 10 second line, Lou Henson usually will gamble on the foul. I'll guess that uh, they're going to try and foul the guy with the ball so it doesn't look like a deliberate foul. So you get the two shot situation. 
But uh, I d usually Lou will, when he was in New Mexico, he didn't wait. He would gamble with you early. And of course, statistically, Iowa right now has uh, pretty good shooters out there in Lester, Arnold, Boyle, and uh, in Brookings. Wait just showed that uh, he can hit him uh, here in the clutch. So we're going to know. 44 seconds to play. NCAA bid, maybe in the offing for Iowa. NIT, maybe for Illinois. And Bob Hogue, it all hangs right now on 44 seconds of time. Remember that Iowa led 67 to 60 with 2.56 left. And now it has been cut to a two-point lead. Full court pressure. Boyle gets it into Wade and a foul on Eddie Johnson. But that's the man they wanted to foul. Steve Wade is the man they wanted to foul. The poorest free throw shooter out there. But Wade, of course, hit two of two a little bit earlier. Clock is still and the running. clock is ticking off. The clock has been ticking off. It has ticked down to 31 seconds, so they're going to have to put a little bit more time on the clock. There you see it. Illinois was arguing that the foul could have been uh, on weight. They'll probably have to go back to about 43 seconds, I would imagine. It was on the inbounds pass, and as we mentioned during the timeout, the clock officially starts when the inbound man touches the ball. Well, Illinois is thinking they found a home clock. Uh, a little home cooking happens sometimes uh, in that area. Now with Steve Waite out of there, Illinois will own the two inside rebound positions. You mean it, Steve Prass is going to Steve. Court. Yeah, Steve Waite's going to be shooting the free throw. Right. So Illinois owns the inside rebound positions, and the most critical free throw here actually isn't the second one. It's the first one that could open up a possible three-point spread for the Hawkeyes. Well, they're counting them down here in the field house, but of course <laughs> they're counting it down so they can put the time back on. I'll guess it'll be about 43 seconds. I think a lot of people here would settle for that uh, clock going off. Uh, Absolutely, but don't go home. And Bob, don't go away from your television screen, 70-68. We'll probably have 43 seconds, as Frosty said. Steve Wade is 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Wondering how he looks from the free throw line. Just under 60%. But he's been there a lot of times. Uh, we'll say that. Uh, he's no stranger to the line. Uh, he's 62 times, making those 37. Earlier today, as people know, they retired the jersey of uh, Ronnie Lester, the famous number 12. If you're wondering about other jerseys, all five of Bucky O'Connor's uh, fabulous five. Bill Logan, uh, number 31. Carl Kane, number 21. Bill Schoaf, number 33. Bill Seberg, number 23. And Charm Sherman, number 46. All had their jerseys retired in basketball. They're the only ones until today. Well, here's the guy that can prove that charity begins at home. He's a hometowner right here in Iowa City. The Iowa City West product, a pressure free throw, one and the bonus. We guessed right, 43 seconds is where they stopped the clock. So wait with the basketball that feels like lead. That was the big one. This one is nice, but that was the critical one. 71 to 68. Now a three-point lead. And wait can make it four. And he does. Now you'll see Iowa play defense, but they will not give up the three-point play. Clock is started, in case you're wondering. Gray to Judson. Lester tries to steal. Inside to Mark Smith. Good move inside. Battles for his own rebound and puts it up and in. And, and again, all of a sudden, it's 72-70, and Lou Henson calls another timeout. For the very same reason we explained before, to save five seconds. He has now saved 10 seconds in this ball game with timeouts and the clock showing 31 seconds. I think you saw an example of we've said that they would not uh, use a, a three-point play foul. Iowa did not even attempt to block that particular one. So now we're 31 seconds. When I mentioned retiring jerseys, two other numbers uh, you don't see in football. Niall Kinnick, number 24, the late Cal Jones, number 62. An oddity as far as the retired jerseys were concerned, after they retired those jerseys of uh, the fabulous uh, five, the NCAA team uh, from way back in 55 and 56, then one year, Ben McGilmer was wearing number 33 before they discovered that that was the retired number of Bill Show. Now, it's easy to retire numbers in basketball because you only dress 10 or 11 guys. It's tough to retire numbers in football because you dress 70 people uh, anymore, and you're required to have certain numbers on back, certain numbers on end, certain numbers on linemen, so that's a little tougher in football. What well, do you think? Only, you know, we got the same situation, Frosty, that we had only 13 seconds ago when you had 44 seconds left and a two-point lead. Well, if you were uh, Lou Henson, would you take a chance on fouling Steve Waite? 
Percentage-wise, he's your forest free thrower, but he's made four in a row. You're thinking, for heaven's sakes, he's bound to miss sooner or later. Casey Stengel said he used to always like to pinch hit for a guy who was four for four instead of a guy who was 0 for five. As he says, that four for four guy is due to have something happen to him. And Brookins is wide open. Brookins is wide open, and he is fouled. Brookins. Neil Bresnahan commits the foul, but Vince Brookins will go to the free throw line to shoot two with 26 seconds left. No question about the foul. Bresnahan was going to make sure that he didn't get the, the lay-in, and Brookins uh, was going to make sure that uh, at least he got the foul. Vince wasn't even thinking of slam dunk at that particular time. A couple of changes. Uh, Judson, who's the good outside shooter, is coming back in. So is uh, Jimmy Griffin, and uh, out of there comes Neil Bresnahan. Judson is their best outside shot. 26 seconds left. Eddie Johnson talking it over in there with his crew. And Luke Vince Brookings, James Griffin. 77.5, is Iowa's best free thrower other than Lester. And he puts them up by three points right now. And the first one was the important one again. Here's number two. It's good, 74-70 with 26 seconds left. We've hit six in a row, haven't we? And the clock will start. And the foul on Kenny Arnold trying for the steal. Kevin Boyle turns around to Lute Olson and says, we probably shouldn't have done that. Lute Olson. Kenny Arnold will make a foul here that he won't be very happy with because the one thing you didn't want to do was foul out front. That's uh, going by Kevin Boyle. Now Arnold's coming up and the outside reaches in and uh, that's one that uh, you can believe Lute Olson didn't want to do. Not a smart foul. Judson comes out and the defensive team ran, uh, goes in there, Reno Gray. And Lou Henson wants to call a, a timeout. Now that's a little bit unusual to call the timeout with your own man going to the line to have to think about it. 21 seconds left. If our unofficial statistics are correct, that would be the last timeout that Lou Henson has this afternoon. We're I talking about we'll to see. Bob retiring the jersey. Ronnie Lester, if people remember when he made the preseason Playboy All-American team, in that picture, you'll not see the jersey they retired today. That was number 10, which earlier this year was worn by Randy Norton. He's off the team and out for baseball. Then it was worn by Tom Grogan, the football walk-on. He got hurt in practice last Monday. He's not uh, here today. But uh, number 12 is the one that they retired. The reason he wore number 10 for Playboy, he'd been playing over in Italy uh, on the Italian-American games. And as any of us who use airlines know, they sometimes <laughs> lose the luggage. And his jersey got lost. And uh, number 10 was the one that fit him best. 21 big seconds in this ball game. And again, hanging in the offing. NCAA bid possibly for Iowa, NIT, win or lose. But for Illinois, the, their season ends today if they lose this ball game. I don't think they can lose this and get a bid. They're 18 and 11 coming in. The officials for the NIT say they're not really concerned about double-digit losses and not concerned at all with how many teams they bring from a conference. But the Fighting Illini definitely are going to be one of the last teams picked of that 32-team field if indu indeed they do lose this game. 74 to 70, 21 seconds left. Eddie Johnson at the free throw line. He was just fouled by Kenny Arnold. He'll shoot one and one. And the first one is good, 74 to 71. The biggest thing about that foul is the fact that the Illini used up just five seconds. And Eddie Johnson for the second one. And it's no good, and a foul underneath. Only one second of time uh, elapsed uh, there. In the second half, incidentally, Iowa is shooting 58%, and uh, Illinois shooting 46%. Take another look uh, at this missed free throw, and you'll see the foul that is going to be in the Hawkeyes behalf. Watch the ball come uh, into your picture up there. It'll miss. It'll come off. Weight is going to go back up, but they reach over. That's Neil Bresnahan, who committed the foul, and Lou Henson, ever the strategist, continues to put him in and out. And Steve Wade, I think, has made his last uh, four in a row down there under this pressure situation. I don't think Illinois has any timeouts uh, left in the ballgame. Our unofficial statistics indicate that. 16 seconds left, 74-71. Reno Gray misses. James Griffin misses. That might do it. 10 seconds. Hawkeyes have it. 8 seconds. 5 seconds. And a foul. 
is called against Eddie Johnson, and the man of the hour will go to the free throw line. Ronnie Lester, a standing ovation with Shoot. three ticks on the clock. Shooting two, it had to be ruled a deliberate foul. Iowa will not even line up, I'm sure, at the free throw line. They do not want any contact. They will, with three seconds go, give Illinois a rebound. Let's see Ronnie Lester cap off his brilliant home career with two for two. Lester has 14 points. And he hits that one. Always looks over that left shoulder at his left heel when they shoot that free throw. Well, the Hawkeyes are home free, Bob Hogg. Let's hope they're into the NCAA. The 48-team field will be called tomorrow. 75-71, 2-1. And the Hawkeyes win this final game. The basket is no good. The Iowa Hawkeyes defeat the Illinois Fighting Illini, 75-71. We'll be back to wrap things up in just a moment. The Fighting Illini, 71. Ronnie Lester who had his jersey retired before the game, led the Hawks this afternoon with 15 points. What a story that was. Kenny Arnold had 14, Steve Krasison 13 before he fouled out late. Steve Waite with 12, Kevin Boyle 